Good morning, everyone. I'm Long Fei from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Today, I will present our work on RFID localization called the relative localization of RFID tags using the spatial temporal phase profiling. So this is a joint work with, uh, with my colleague, Zimu Cho from HQST, Professor Zheng Yang and Professor Yun Hao Liu from Tsinghua University and Professor Alex Liu from the Michigan State University. So RFID technology is a battery-free label stored with a unique ID. Every day in our lives, we are facing or using different kinds of RFID tags. For example, in the residential area, we use the RFID-based entrance card for admission control. And in the metro or the bus stations, we use the RFID cards for the quick payment. So RFID technology also facilitates our lives in other ways, such as the enter counterfeiting for the clothing manufacturers, warehouse management for the supermarket, and the book management system in the library. So in many RFID-based applications, we need to pinpoint the location of each tagged object. That is, locating the target item in the physical world. For example, in the warehouse, we need to find where the desired item is. And in the library, we need to know where the librarian puts the desired books. So during the past years, there are a lot of research efforts in the object localization. So the proposed localization schemes use either fingerprinting or ranging-based methodology to acquire the so-called absolute location of the object. Here, by seeing the absolute location, we mean to detect the latitude and the longitude of the desired object. So actually, in many real applications, we find that people care more about the relative location of the desired atom rather than its absolute location. For example, in the library, the reader care more about in which row and the column that the book locates. So the answers like the Hamlet in the 35th books on the second floor is more intuitive and preferable. So another example is in the warehouse. Basically, the workers only need to know the order of the desired atom on the shelf, so instead of its absolute location. So another representative example is the baggage sortation system. Here, it is more important to get the order of baggage such that the further actions like sortation can be performed. So now that there are so many absolute localization schemes, so a natural question arises, can we convert from the absolute to the relative location using the state-of-the-art absolute localization schemes? So before asking these questions, let's we first look at if we use the state-of-the-art to translate into the relative location, what will happen? So we first look at the landmark which is the first proposal on the active tag-based localization. So this game is reported to have an error marking of two meters accuracy. So basically, this two meters error marking may place one book to another bookshelf, leading to a book missing. So besides, we know this game introduces significant deployment burden since it requires densely deployed anchor tags. So such a scheme is not suitable for translating into the relative location. Then let's we look at another absolute localization scheme, PNH. We know this scheme is based on an observation that the signal of nearby tags will experience a similar multipath propagation. So by comparing the multipath profile of each tag with the pre-deployed tags, we can get the location of the desired tag. So we know such a scheme could achieve a median accuracy of, of 20 centimeters in non long side cases. However, we know the error marking of the 20 centimeters will, sti will still place one book several big books away from its desired place. 
So besides, we know start scheme also requires densely deployed anchor checks and the dedicated hardware like the USRP. So it is also suitable for translating into the relative location. Finally, let's look at the telegram. So this game uses a hologram to estimate the location of a mobile tag in one centimeter level accuracy. So this accuracy basically could reflect the relative order of books with high accuracy. However, we know this game requires rigid calibration of RFID devices. For example, to locate the tag using this game, we first need to deploy multiple antennas and ranging the distance between each pair of these antennas. So this process definitely is cumbersome and time consuming, especially when we use it for book sortation in the library or finding the desired books in the warehouse. Besides, we know the computational overhead of this game is increased significantly when the localization area is large. So this game is also unsuitable to translate into the relative location. So after reviewing this state of the art, we can see that these games either suffers from the low accuracy or they rely on the high cost hardware like the USRP or densely deployed anchor tags. So they are not suitable to translate into the relative location of desired tags. So here comes the challenge. Could we design a localization scheme that can directly acquire the relative location of the tags before, uh, instead, uh, without detecting their absolute location prior? So basically, this game should be accurate. Also, we know this game should increase low computational overhead so that we can deploy it flexibly. Besides, such schemes should also use off-the-shelf devices so we can deploy it with low cost. And in this paper, we propose a scheme called STPP to fulfill this requirement. So the basic principle of our STPP approach is to explore the reader mobility to detect the relative location of RFID tags. Here, we use a toy example to explain this principle. So as this figure shows, when reader antenna moves along a straight line at a constant speed, say from the point A to the point B, then we know the distance between the tag and the reader will, uh, will change accordingly. So more precisely, we can see this distance D will decrease first as the reader antenna moves towards this tag and then this distance will increase again as the reader antenna moves away. So during the tag movement, uh, during the antenna movement, we know the reader antenna will continuously interrogate this tag. So we will acquire a set of face readings along the time domain. We term this set of the face readings as the face profile of this tag. So the key here is that the face profile essentially reflects the distance changing between the reader and the antenna. So as this example shows, the face profile changes continuously when the reader moves towards and then away from the tag. So it achieves the local minimum when the reader antenna moves to the point that is in perpendicular to this tag. So for simplicity, we term this point as a perpendicular point. So, given two tags with different x coordinates, when the reader antenna moves along the x dimension, there will be a lag of their face profile along time domain. So, basically, we can determine the relative order of tags along the x dimension by referring the time stamp when the reader antenna moves to the perpendicular point of each tag. So this is a basic principle for acquiring the tag order along the x dimension. So for the tag order along the y dimension, so our key finding is that the face changing rate of these tags are different. So as this toy example shows, there are two tags with different y coordinates. 
So as the reader antenna moves along the x dimension, we know the phase profile changes with different rate due to the different check to antenna distance along the y axis. Indeed, we know it is easy to understand the larger the distance between the check and the reader antenna, the slower the phase changing rate of this tag will be. So, the phase changing rate of each tag essentially reflects the tag order along the y axis. So, our FTPP approach basically infers the relative location of the tag by determining their relative order al along the y axis and axis, respectively. So the basic process of the FTPP contains three steps. The first step is to detect the v zone profile, which is a portion of phase profile that shows the V figure. So after finding all the V zone profile, it detects the perpendicular point within the V zone profile. Based on the time step of each perpendicular point, FTPP then determines the tag order along the x axis. After that, STPP computes the phase changing rate within the weasel and determines the tag order along the y-axis. So let's we first look at how to detect the weasel with noises. Here, we design a template mapping technique for weasel detection. So as this figure shows, although the phase profile are full of noises, and disconnected abruptly due to the unstable backscatter links, we still find that they show, they show a stable and similar phase changing pattern. So we can create a template and match each profile we collected to this template. Here, we adopt the dynamic time warping metric to match the detected profile with a template. So the key here is that the dynamic time warping pays more attention on the similarity of the profile rather than the local values. We know although the dynamic time warping can detect the vision effectively, it is still time consuming when the reading rate is high and the pro phase profile is long. So to enhance the computational efficiency, we here split the phase profile of each tag into multiple pieces. So within each piece, we call the maximum, the minimum, and the average value. Then we perform the dynamic time warping on the cost screen presentation of the phase profile. So by doing so, we can significantly reduce the comparing overhead. So after detecting, detecting the vision within each phase profile, the second step is to find the time stamp of the perpendicular point. Ideally, we know the perpendicular point corresponds to the minimum phase value within the, within the V zone. However, in reality, we can see that the moving trail of the reader may now be a straight line. For example, when the reader is driven by human beings. So the phase profile here may now be strictly self-symmetric. To solve this problem, we perform the quadratic fitting on each V zone first. So the quadratic function could help to reduce the impact of this irregular moment. Then we detect the local minimum value of each fitting function and get the tag order based on the get the tag order along the x axis based on the timestamp when we get the minimum value. So after determining the tag order along the x axis we compare the phase changing rate of each tag within the vision to determine their relative order along the y-axis. So in this step, we first split the vision into the same number of small blocks. Here, within each block, we compute the average phase values. Then, we compare the phase changing rate of two profiles by comparing the average value within, this, within the corresponding blocks. So such process is easy to implement it and takes ignorable computational overhead. So here comes the experiment. So for the experiment, we basically use the commercial off-the-shelf RFID devices. 
including an impingent RFID reader, two RFID antennas, and different kinds of passive RFID tags. So for the evaluation metric, here we mainly, we mainly rely on the audio accuracy, which defined as the number of tags that are ordered correctly, divided by the total numbers of tags. So to examine the effectiveness and robustness of our relative localization schemes, we basically test it in different testing cases. Here, the, the first testing case is called the tag moving case. So in this case, we attach different number of RFID tags with different spacing on a moving conveyor. The reader antenna is said to be one meter away from the moving conveyor. Well, the second case is called the antenna moving case. In this case, we attach a set of RFID tags on a wet board. Then, we bond the reader antenna on a moving rack and push it manually to sweep these tags. So, let's we first look at the detection accuracy. Here, we compare our scheme with uh, one heuristic and three schemes proposed in previous works. The heuristic is called the GRSSI, which explores the signal strength changes to determine the tag order along one dimension. While the second scheme is landmark, which explores the similarity of signal changes to determine the tag position. The third scheme is called OTRAC, which leverages the RSSI and reading rate to determine the tag order along one dimension. While the fourth game is a back post, which explores hyperbolic positioning principle to determine the tag location. So as this result shows, our FTPP scheme outperforms all of these four schemes to a great extent. And we can see that its detection accuracy maintains above 88% for both the X and Y axis. Then, we examine the robustness of our proposed relative localization scheme. So in this trial of experiment, we vary the distance between adjacent tags from one meter to 10 centimeters. So this figure generally shows a box plot of the accuracy value of different schemes as we vary the distance between the adjacent, adjacent tags. So the whisker here indicates the values outside the upper and lower contours. So from this figure, we have two observations. First, we can see that the median, the median accuracy of STPP is significant, significantly higher than that of other four schemes. And second, STPP scales better than the other four schemes as the adjacent tag distance decreases. So except for those macro and macro benchmarks, we also conduct two real work case studies to show the effectiveness of our relative localization scheme. So the first case study is on locating the misplaced books in the library. Basically, we know every year the library ring needs to manually check the position of each book. We know such process is time consuming since the book collection is very huge in the library. So, if our relative localization scheme can be used successfully in the library case, then the book sortation process will be simplified. So in this case study, we attach 90 tags of three layer of books. The thickness of each book spans from, th from three centimeters to eight centimeters. So this figure shows the order of the books that we obtained in one experiment. Here, each dot of represents a book and each cross represents a book that are ordered incorrectly. Note that the gap between two dots reflect the distance between two tags. So from this figure, we can say that all incorrectly ordered books are those C ones as their tags are much closer. So the second key study is to determine the back order in the airport. So we implement our scheme in our tag assist project. So this system detects the appearance of each baggage 
and then use our uh, scheme to determine the relative order of the packages. Finally, this check order uh, simulates in a huge monitor. By doing so, the workers can easily distinguish each package and deliver them to the corresponding flight. So this case study runs over one month in Beijing Capital International Airport and Sanya Phoenix Airport, China. So here we give a num numer numerical result in different testing periods. So from this result, we can see that our localization scheme achieves a relative stable and high accuracy for back package detection. So in contrast, we can see that the old tracks performance decreased significantly when there are a huge number of baggage in the baggage sortation pool. And the similar trend can also be found in the JRSSI approach. So here comes the conclusion. So in this work, we provide a simple yet effective relative RFID localization scheme. So such scheme employs a spatial temporal correlation of face profiles and achieves relative stable and the accurate result. So we believe this relative localization scheme would enable a new category of location-based services. Okay, that's all, thank you. Masoud um, Mushaf from USC. Um, how uh, your scheme uh, performance depends on the uniformity of uh, antenna movement. For example, if it accelerates or uh, uh, it stops moving or going backward, uh, how uh, the accuracy changes. So your question is when the reader moves not straight line or at different speed, right? Yeah, uh, actually it will, uh, it will uh, impact the performance of our scheme. But as you know, in our case studies, uh, generally speaking, when you move the reader at different speeds, uh, it will basically generate the, uh, diff uh, it will generate the same impact on the nearby tags. So their face profile will generate a si similar pattern, so we can also determine their ta tag order correctly, yes. Hi, hey, I'm at MIT. Uh, so uh, I noticed when I put these uh, RFIDs very close to each other, like in your picture, they start to couple and their wireless channels become really bad. I yeah. wonder if you notice such a thing and how does it affect the performance of your system? Sorry. <laughs> so basically when you put them close, yeah. they're, they're, the wireless channel goes down. Yeah. And uh, like, how, do you notice that and how does it affect your system? So, so your question is, when the so when you put them closer, you get better accuracy, right? Yeah. But their channels are a bit worse. You mean the they will uh, impact each other? Yeah, yeah. Oh. They they couple. Uh, so generally, in our case study, we find that uh, actually there is uh, little or no impact on their performance, or because we didn't see any. Uh, I mean, the performance degradation. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, Zach Kabalak, MIT. Um, how fast can you move the reader or the, um, or the RFIDs and still accurately decode them? Uh, sorry, you, you're... How, how, fast, how fast do you move the conveyor belt? You mean you how fast to the moving it does, speed of does the, the antenna, reader? Yeah. Oh yeah, actually uh, in our case study, we move the reader antenna at a speed of 0 0.3 meters per second. Yeah, because when the reader antenna moves too fast, your face profile would be very sparse right. because you get little readings. Sure. Yeah, so uh, actually the moving, the moving speed will uh, impact the performance of our scheme. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 